Do you know why Bitcoin was created? What is the concept of Bitcoin? People like the Electronic Frontier Foundation come out with these comments about Bitcoin, this new censorship resistant system, talking about how it will stop governments taking your money and all this stuff. Where people sit there going, it's going to keep going up forever. Invest now because I've already invested and I want more money. You have people saying it's going to be valuable because it's going to be more valuable. Is this true or has the Bitcoin concept been twisted? Bitcoin doesn't do anything like that. We know that Satoshi Nakamoto is the person or group of people who created the first digital currency, but do you really understand why Bitcoin was created in the first place? Was it created to replace cash? Was it created to be a store of wealth? Or was it created to allow money laundering, cyber theft, and child pornography? What was the real reason for Bitcoin's creation? I'm saying exactly the same things I said online. Bitcoin was never designed to be any of those things. Bitcoin's die-hard fans will say Bitcoin was created to destroy the banking system. As it was defined in Satoshi Nakamoto's white paper, Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash that allows online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. In a simple language Bitcoin was created as a way for people to send money over the internet. The digital currency was intended to provide an alternative payment system that would operate free of central control, but otherwise be used just like traditional currencies. It, that's really ignorant when you think about it. Banking is not cash. Bitcoin is an electronic cash system. Now, banking, on the other hand, is distribution of capital. Bitcoin doesn't take your funds and pool them and give out home loans. It doesn't give out business loans. It doesn't manage those, uh, those sources of funds. It's cash. And this is, these people are too ignorant to even realize or if they're not ignorant, they're disingenuous. And they're sitting there saying that we're going to replace banking for third world people. It's not. Third world people don't have investment. They don't have loans. Saying you've got Bitcoin isn't going to pull those people out of poverty. What it does is it allows this false narrative of a Ponzi where people sit there going, it's going to keep going up forever. Invest now because I've already invested and I want more money. That's the problem here. Before we go any further, I want you to know that I am not claiming or implying that the people in this video are Bitcoin creators. This video was created to help people understand the Bitcoin phenomenon, as many people believe they know why Bitcoin was created, but they don't. Bitcoin was designed to be an electronic cash, not a bank. An electronic cash is said in a white paper. Exactly. It's really about having a system that allows us to have micropayments more than anything else. However, the currency's volatility shattered this plan almost immediately. No one in their right mind would buy coffee with Bitcoin, for example, because you could buy $3 worth of coffee today with Bitcoin, and tomorrow that same Bitcoin is worth $30, and you've effectively spent $30 in a cup of coffee, or you could use Bitcoin for your $3 coffee, and tomorrow that same Bitcoin is worth 60 cents, and the merchants have lost out. Buying and holding Bitcoin for the long term isn't a good idea right now due to the high volatility, and if it's electronic cash, why would you want to keep it? Let's say you have $30 and you keep it in a safe for 10 years. That same $30 will still be $30 after 10 years, and yes, it will lose some value due to inflation, but it will still be $30. What about Bitcoin? Do you believe it will retain its value if you keep it for another 10 years? That's why it's not easy to spend Bitcoin. You can't buy things on Amazon or eBay with Bitcoins. People who buy Bitcoin don't buy it to spend it. They buy it to hold it and expect the value of Bitcoin to rise. I want you to use Bitcoin. I don't want you to hoard it. The, the whole concept of having hoarded money is a pathology. It's wrong. If you want to save, good. If you want to build, good. If you want to create something, this pathology about I'm, I'm going to get a lump of gold and hope that it goes up in value is wrong. How about actually taking something and building with it? Bitcoin is not the future. It is the present.
cryptocurrencies have already arrived to rule the world. That's what they say, at least. Okay, I accept your point. So, can I use Bitcoin to buy a new car? Even if it's a Tesla, not yet. So, can I use it to buy a new smartphone? Not at all. Perhaps a pizza for Friday night. You'll still have to use fiat currency for that, though. Is this something I'll ever be able to do? It's complicated, to say the least. If you were ever able to actually buy anything with Bitcoin. I guess most of you have never even heard of places where you can buy things using it. And if you did, then you of course heard about the previously mentioned Tesla, probably Domino's Pizza, and of course Darknet. Most of the illegal internet sites operating in the darknet, which sell drugs, guns, and child pornography, operate by Bitcoin payments. And it is done because of its anonymity. This anonymity that is supposed to be the biggest advantage of Bitcoin over other tradable goods is actually helping organized crime groups, terrorists, and countries willing to evade international sanctions as to transfer their money from one place to another without extensive money laundering. While many people like comparing Bitcoin to gold, when it comes to illegal trade, there are some fundamental differences. First of all, our yellow shining resource is heavy and hard to transport. And in order to finalize a transaction, you need to meet the recipient in person. Here, the advantage of Bitcoin being a pure line of ones and zeros comes to play. You can buy absolutely anything you need to commit a crime by just one click on your phone and no federal authority will be informed about your potential illegal transaction. We are not saying it will never be used as money. Technically speaking, anything can qualify as money as long as the receiver and sender agree. That's how the barter system existed for years. People would get rice in exchange for flour. Or, salt in exchange for sugar. Until, they realized that not everything is available, or can be grown in the same amount. This made certain goods more valuable than others. The paper currency has contributed to some stability by assigning a monetary value to all goods and services. There is a generation that believes that paper currency, like other currencies, will lose its value or perish over time. One of their main concerns was the centralization of fiat currency, which gives banks and governments control over people's hard-earned money. Just know this. If you control the money, you write the laws. But that doesn't rule out the possibility of it becoming money, and it may become money. But let me ask you, why Bitcoin was created in the first place? Tell us in the comment section below, if we got it right, or if we misunderstood the whole thing about why Bitcoin was created.